This is Dan Zelnick, president of Afara. I'm coming to you from my home office just outside of Toronto for this week's 60 Seconds of Sustainability. Hey, welcome to 2021. I had predicted that this year would be less chaotic than last. However, this year I started off with a lot of chaos and we have seen that the there is renewed violence in the United States uh, when there should be a peaceful transition of power. But let's focus on Georgia for a moment. And we have seen that the two senators elected in Georgia were both the Democratic candidates, which now puts Joe Biden in a position where he can govern all three arms of government in the United States. So what does this mean for climate and sustainability? 60 seconds on the clock starting now. It's important to recall that Joe Biden, when he was campaigning, had a biggest item on his campaign trail was climate, that he was going to spend two trillion dollars decarbonizing the United States, specifically focused on electricity. Electricity is the largest source of emissions in the United States. And Joe Biden wants to put the US on a path to decarbonize their electricity production. So what does this mean? This means a lot more investment in clean tech. This could be a net bad for Canada. We have played an outsized role in Canada on clean tech relative to the size of our population emissions and relative to the size of our innovation infrastructure. We are a heavy hitter on clean tech and $2 trillion will suck a lot of that innovation south of the border. So this is a net good for the climate. This is good for climate negotiations. The US will be back at the table, but it could be tricky navigating the next couple months and years as a Canadian, and you may see some of that innovation infrastructure get sucked south of the border and many of the companies working on clean tech get funding and piloting opportunities south of the border. Hey, I also wanted to address what did happen in the United States this week. We have never seen violence during the transition of power in the United States, well, not since 1876. This is a sad moment for democracy. And I hope, I hope our neighbors to the south get things back on track quickly. See you next week, folks. Bye.